So we're in the process of convincing ourselves of why the reciprocal function, despite the fact we have to lift our pencil to draw the graph, is actually a continuous function. The problem is not with the function's formula. The problem is with its domain. Its domain is all non-zero real numbers. And we'd like to be able to say that that domain is a disconnected set. So in our previous video, we had two different notions, potential notions, of what it means for a set to be a connected subset of the real line. We had the idea of an interval. That's a set that contains every number in between any two numbers that it contains. Right? So it has no gaps in it. If I contain an A and a B, then I contain everything between A and B. And we also had a notion of connected set that was purely topological. That if there is a separating open cover of my set, if A can be contained in a union of non-empty disjoint open sets, then it must be contained in just one of them. Right? I can't have points of A that belong to more than one disjoint open subset. So in this video, we want to explore whether or not those two notions are different. Right? Is there a difference between the intervals in the real line and the connected subsets of the real line? Spoiler alert, there is not. Let's see why. So remember, an interval as a subset of the real numbers is a set where any time I contain two real numbers A and B, I must also contain every single real number in between A and B. And so I don't have any gaps. That's what we mean by interval. And the more general topological notion of connectedness is that if my set can be contained in a union of two non-empty disjoint open sets, then it must be contained entirely within one of those non-empty disjoint open sets. So is there a difference between these two different ideas when we're talking about subsets of the real line? And the answer is no. Every interval is a connected set. And every connected subset of the real line is an interval. To give you a flavor for why, let's suppose that I have a, a connected subset of the real numbers according to the topological definition. We'll call it E. And let's suppose that I pick two real numbers A and B that belong to my set E. I want to claim that any C that's in between A and B, any real number between A and B, must belong to E. So let's imagine that that's not true. So let's choose a real number C in between A and B, where A and B belong to my set E, and assume by way of contradiction that C does not belong to my set. Well, if C doesn't belong to my set, then that must mean it belongs to the complement of my set. C is going to belong to the complement of E. And if C belongs to the complement of E, that means that every point of E is either going to be less than C or it's going to be greater than C. This is this law of trichotomy that exists in the total ordering on the real numbers, right? Any pair of real numbers, one of them is less than the other, or that one is greater than the other, or they're equal. But if we rule out equality, then we must have that if C doesn't belong to my set, E, then every element of E is either strictly less than C or strictly greater than C. And what that means is that Every element of my set E is either contained in the open interval from minus infinity to C, or it's contained in the open interval from C to infinity. Those two intervals are open sets. They also happen to be disjoint open sets. And their union contains all of E. Because again, if C doesn't belong to my set, then every element of E, every element of my set, is either strictly less than C, and so it belongs to this first interval, or it's strictly greater than C, so it belongs to the second interval. But then this is a separating open cover for my set E. And because it's a separating open cover for my set E, I can use this to determine whether or not E is a connected set. But my point A, by assumption, by construction, belongs to the first one of my two sets in my separating open cover. My little a belongs to the set capital A. And my little b, which is an element of E, belongs to the set capital B. So E is not a subset of either one of these two open sets. And therefore, in fact, my set is not connected at all. And so what we've proven here, really, is we've proven that um, if I have a, uh, a connected subset and it somehow skips a C in the middle between any two A and B, then it cannot, in fact, be a connected subset at all. So a connected set must be an interval. And you can sort of fill in the gaps, probably, and figure out how to argue the other direction, that every interval of the real line is a connected set. So this is actually a really sort of nice result, right? that at least as far as subsets of the real numbers go, you know, using the standard real number topology that comes from its ordering, right? that there is no difference between the notion of connectedness and the notion of being an interval. 
And so in our mind's eye, when we picture a friendly subset of the real numbers and we picture an interval, we're picturing all of the examples that we can think of, of connected subsets of the real numbers. So that's really good news. And the one thing I wanna close this video with is that connectedness per se exists on a spectrum as well, like many of our topological notions. A few videos ago when we were talking about open sets and closed sets, we sort of reasoned that openness and closeness exists on a spectrum where open sets um, contain none of their boundary points. And on the other end of the spectrum, connect, uh, sorry, closed sets are those that contain all of their boundary points. Well, connectedness kind of works the same way. On one end of the connectedness spectrum are the connected sets. The connected sets are those that contain just a single unbroken component. But this example where we just sort of delete a single real number from the real line is a disconnected set, but it's only sort of minimally disconnected. Right? If we put this point back in, if we just fill in this hole, if you like, then our set becomes connected again. Right? So it's very, very close to being connected but it's not actually connected. So we're gonna call it disconnected, but it's sort of the, the least amount of disconnected that we can have for a disconnected set. Because after all, connectedness is a pretty high bar. It can fail just a little bit, as it failed in this example, or it can fail an awful lot. We might imagine examples of sets that are so scattered. They might, they might be discrete, they might not be, right? We could start with a discrete set, like the, the set of the integers as a subset of the real line. Right? That's a really, really disconnected set. Because, in fact, any two points of the integers as a subset of the real line can be separated one from another, right? There is no sort of chunk of the set of integers as a subset of the real line, which consists of an entire interval full of real numbers. And so that's somehow going to be the other end of the spectrum. And that's the end of the spectrum that we call the totally disconnected sets. In a totally disconnected set, the only connected subsets that exist are the subsets that consist of just a single point. So I can't have a connected portion of a totally disconnected set unless that connected portion is just a single point. So that's sort of the, the other end, the maximally disconnected examples are the totally disconnected sets. So on one end of the spectrum, we have connected sets that have a single unbroken connected component, which on the real line really just means that it consists of a single interval, whether that's an open interval, a half open interval, a closed interval, whatever, right? And on the other end, we have the totally disconnected stuff where we can't, for the life of us, find even a single subset of it, which consists of a uh, connected component, which is an interval. All of my connected subsets consist only of a single point. And everything in between, which is not connected, but which might not be totally disconnected, we're just gonna generically call those the disconnected sets. So connectedness exists on this spectrum. And sometimes it's, it's convenient for us to think about the extremes. Right? Connectedness is really nice. Totally disconnectedness is kind of nice. I mean, at least it sort of guarantees for us that we're, we're totally at the other end of the spectrum. Um, but everything in between, we're just going to call disconnected you know, to varying degrees that we might or might not be able to quantify. So that's connected sets. That's our first idea for what it means to talk about how thick, how pervasive a set is. Um, but it's not always the most valuable topological notion. It's really useful for doing calculus. Um, but I want to look in the next couple of videos at some more notions of connectedness that come from our ideas of what makes an open set and what might be at the other end of different kinds of topological spectrums from openness. What are some other ways that a set can fail to be open that can tell us something about how thick or thin or pervasive that set happens to be among the real numbers?